Hey guys, it's Elena. So for today's tutorial, I wanted to show you how to create a rock formation in Procreate, and this has been requested by Renee in the Facebook group. So thank you for that request. And I'm going to show how to make rocks like this using my stone and marble brush set, which is available for purchase in the link in the description. So you can also use any other kind of brushes that you may want to try, anything that has a texture in it. And you can just see what kind of interesting stone textures that you can come up with. So we'll be going over how to set up the canvas, how to create the shapes and apply the texture brushes, how to add shadows and highlights, and optionally how to add cracks and colors to your rocks. So you can use this technique for landscapes, buildings, or just detailed drawings of stones. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I've created a new canvas in Procreate, and this is 11 by 14 inches at 300 dpi. And this is a rock that I made. So we're going to make a, a lot of rocks that looks like this. So I'll just go ahead and turn that off so we can start fresh. So first we've got a new layer and we're going to call that base layer. And in this base layer, we're going to just create an outline of the shapes. We're not going to do any shading or anything like that, but we're just going to draw some rock shapes. So I'll go to the inking folder, which is the standard inking folder that comes with Procreate app. And in this folder is the studio pen. So this is just kind of a standard ink pen. And so the color that I want to go with is a dark brown. And so I just wanted to give you the hex code for this particular brown. So that's 2B2622. And we're basically just going to use variations of that, but you can really use any color that you want to. So for the base color, we just want to have a medium neutral color. So you can use gray, you can use a brown like I'm going to do. So with that studio pen, I'm just going to draw some random jagged shapes and then I'm going to fill them in. I think I, I want to have like some big rocks down here. So I'm just kind of being really really random and the main thing is that you join it up not a huge fan of that so i'm just going to close it up like this so once you've got a shape that you're happy with you can then take the color and just drag and drop that into your shape and i'm just going to put that in there as well and just kind of fix any edges that are looking a bit funny or that you're not 100 happy with or if you need a bit more jaggedy shapes you can add that so i'm going to add a little bit of a jaggedy shape here And just fill that again maybe add a little bit here okay so i'm all right with that and i'm just going to draw a few more and you can keep it all in the same layer as long as they're not touching so if you want to have some rocks that are overlapping we'll go over that later but for now let's just draw some rocks that are not touching each other So I've had some feedback actually that it can be a bit disconcerting if I'm going in and out like that on my videos. So I'm just going to go to canvas reference and then I'm going to reference the canvas itself. And I'm just going to put that up here so that I can see what I'm doing without having to zoom in and out. Okay, so I've got this, this base layer of shapes. It doesn't look like much right now, but what we want to do now is to create a new layer right above this one. And I'm going to name that stone texture. And then we want to make that layer a clipping mask by tapping it and tapping clipping mask. So that means that whatever we put into this layer, which will be the stone textures, will only appear on top of what's already in the layer below it. And the, the stone textures are here at the top. 
and there's also quite a lot of marble textures and what we're going to mainly focus on are the stone textures for this tutorial and so I'm just going to start out with stone number 24 so for the color I still have this dark brown selected and going to the value tab here you can see this B slider makes that same color lighter or darker so we're going to be using this B slider in order to do the next few steps but what I'm going to do for now is just take that B slider so that it's close to 100% but not completely 100% so something like 95 96 so we have a nice light version of that same color so now with a stone 24 brush selected I'm going to add this to some not all but some of these stones so I'm just going to take the brush size down a bit so I can be precise So around the edges, because all of this is in the same layer, I'm just being a bit careful around the edges so that I don't add it to some of these other stones. That did actually happen a bit there, but that's okay. So now I'd like to choose a different brush and do the same thing in a different texture. So I want to go with stone number 10. You could really just use any of the stone brushes in this folder, but I'm going to go with number 10 and we're still in the same stone textures layer and as long as we're being careful we can keep it in there i do like to keep as few layers as possible because i know that some of you might have an ipad that doesn't have as much memory and doesn't have a whole lot of layers but you can also just add these in separate layers if you want to so i'm just going to carefully add this to a couple more of the stones and i'm being careful with these texture brushes not to lift up the pen so that we get unbroken texture. So now I just want to select one more texture so that we have three different textures. So I wanted something a little bit veiny looking with some veins in it. So I'm choosing stone number three. Some of the other ones I considered were number nine and number four, but I'm just going to go with number three. Really any of these would work, but I just want to have a variety. So I've got kind of a crumbly texture. I've got a cracked texture and now I have a veiny texture. Okay, so now that we've filled in all of these textures, we're going to move on to the next step, which is adding our shading and our highlights. Now that we can see the texture, it gets much easier to do that. In order to do the shading, we're going to go back to the base layer that we did originally. You can see that it's still there in all its glory without the texture. So the textures are in a separate layer. What we're going to do is tap that base layer and then tap alpha lock you can kind of see that there's a checkerboard behind it now and what this means is that whatever we draw on this layer now it's not going to go outside of the lines it's only going to stay where we have these base rocks and that's useful because we don't have to think about staying inside the lines we can just do the shading and not have to worry about anything else so to start out with i'm going to go to my colors and once again we're going to go back to the b slider and take the b slider almost all the way down so that we have an off black color Color, and something like five or six percent and then we're gonna go to the airbrushing folder which is a standard procreate brush folder and we've got the soft brush up here and you could play around with the size and the opacity of the brush and a lot of people would want to do shading all around I think that that is not necessarily very realistic so I'm going to try to work with the texture that's already there which is why we're doing this now instead of before so this rock for instance it looks like it kind of wants some shading here so with this dark color I'm going to come in here and then just add a little bit of darkening here and you know what I think I want to take that B slider even darker so that it's like at two percent and then we have a really dark color and the reason I'm not just using straight up black is because I do want it to somehow be in the same shade as everything that we're doing here so I'm just going to bring that in some of the areas that seem like they want to have a bit more of a shadow to them so if we don't go all the way around uniformly then it's a bit more realistic this way 
And we can also do a little bit on top later and I'll show you how to do that. So with that same color, I will just go ahead and do the same thing on all of these rocks. You might also want to not only use this on the edges, but Bring it in sometimes if you feel like you want part of it to just be a bit darker and more in the shade. So you're kind of thinking about light while doing this, like where is your light source coming from? And that'll be even more relevant when we do the highlights in a moment. So now I'm going to take the B slider all the way up so that it's not as light as the texture was, but a little bit lighter than the base color. And I'm going to add some highlights. I'm just going to take the opacity a little bit down on that. And I'm using a really light touch. We're still on the base layer. So the purpose of what we're doing here is just to try and make it look more realistic, more dimensional. It's a bit random and you can just kind of make decisions as you go about what you want to be standing out with the highlights and what you want to be in the background with the shadows. You don't want to go too light or push too hard because then you might end up erasing the texture that's there or just making it harder to see it. Like there, I'm not really happy with that because I just made their list of contrast. So we're just going to go for very subtle changes. So at this point, we have some fairly realistic looking rocks here and we can leave it like this or we can do some different optional things. So one of the things that we can do is add some accents on top as well. So I'm just going to get rid of that old one there. So right now we've got the base layer, which looks like this because we've been adding these shadows and highlights. And then we've got the stone textures on top, which only shows up because it's a clipping mask over the base. So what we can do is add another layer above that, make that a clipping mask as well. And then we can rename that. So I've just written cracks and accents there in this layer. We can continue adding more shadows if we want to. So I'm going to go back to that dark black layer and I still have my soft brush. So for instance, if I wanted to add a bit more shadow here, on the edge I could do that a bit more boldly it shows up a bit more now that we are above this texture layer so before when we were adding the shadows and the highlights we were below and so like I said I don't want to go around the whole thing and just add a shadow because honestly that doesn't really look very realistic but I do want to add a couple a bit more intense shadows like this
So some of them like this that have a really intense texture, I'm adding shadows pretty much all the way around because the shadows down below don't show all that much. And I've just noticed that I have a mistake here. So at any point, if you find a mistake, you can go back to your base layer and then you can fill that in again, but you'd have to turn off the alpha lock and then you can just fill that in again. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my cracks and accents layer and just keep on adding that shadow. Once again, I've discovered an error. So I'm going back to my base layer and going to my eraser, going to that soft brush, and I'm just going to fix that. And back to my shadows. I just noticed this looks like a bird. There's the eye, there's the beak. Anyway, so there's my shadows. I'm not an expert at lighting, so please don't, don't be mean to me in the comments. So yeah, we've got the shadows somewhat more realistic now. So I did name this layer Cracks and Accents. It's really more like cracks and additional shadows. But as cracks have been promised, I'm going to go back to the inking folder and the studio pen, which is what we had originally used to make the shapes. And so with that rather small, some of these rocks have got cracks in them and maybe they're not as strong as we want. Maybe we leave it like that and that's fine, but maybe we can also go in here and make them a bit stronger. So I'm just using that studio pen to color in some of these cracks. And I'm not going to do it on all of them, but I'll just add the cracks to a few of these just to make them bolder. And you can also use this if your texture doesn't have cracks in it already, you can use this to add cracks that don't already exist. Some of these are just fine how they are and I don't want all of them to be super bold and noticeable so I'm just kind of looking over it and I feel like that's probably enough. Maybe a bit here. So I'll just do the same thing on some of these other ones as well. I'm actually okay with that. It's mostly the texture that already had cracks in it that I wanted to add a couple more, but I think I'm just going to leave that as it is. So as a final step, which is also optional, we can add one more layer and that will be our color layer. And so once that has added above everything else, tap the layer and make that a clipping mask as well. And in this layer, we're going to change the blend mode 
by tapping the N and then moving this down to where it says color. So what this means is everything in this layer is only going to recolor what is below it instead of covering it up or obscuring it in any way. So it will change color. So we could go crazy and have a lot of different colors or we could keep it realistic and I think that's just what I'll do by using more gray and beige. So I'm just going to go to a grayish color and then we're going to go back to the airbrushing and go back to our soft brush and we can play around with the opacity here. I'll just put it up all the way for now and we can play around with the size as well. And what I wanted to do is just kind of add a couple of patches where the color changes in a subtle way. So I'm just going to start experimenting with that and I think I want the brush a bit bigger and I'm using a very light touch so you can see that it starts to change color ever so slightly and it looks a little bit blue. So in addition to that, I think I'm just going to go with a yellowish color. Add that a little bit. I'll go ahead and put some of that yellow in here. I like how warm that looks. I think I'm going to go back to my original brown color and then maybe make that a bit more saturated and see how that looks on here. I find myself wanting something a bit pinker, so I'm just experimenting with the sliders here to see what I can get. I do like that pinkish tone. I think that kind of sets off this particular texture kind of nicely. This wants something, so I'm going to go with a lightish brown and just see how that looks. Okay, so that is the basics of how to make rock formations using my stone and marble brush set. And you can do something similar with any of the brushes in this set. Or if you don't have these brushes, you can always experiment with this technique using any other brushes that you may have. They don't have to be rock textures. You can do this with watercolor textures or really any kind of brushes that have a texture in them. You can experiment with that and see what sort of stones that you can make. So at this point, this is not really a finished piece, but this is more to show you how you can use this. So I'm just going to group those. And some other things to experiment with would be changing the background color to something dark or just adding some scenery to this. You can also, now that we've got this all grouped together, you can duplicate that. So now we have two and what you can do with this is you can manipulate it further by going to the arrow. You could then flip it both ways and then move it up so that now we've got multiple rocks all bordering on each other like this. And you could keep doing that multiple times and you could just move it around so that everything is just different. You could change the size. Obviously we've got some rocks that are up against the edges, but you can erase those. And so you can do a lot with this. You can layer things and make them however you want. But I just wanted to show you this basic technique so that you can use it in your drawings. And there you have it. So I hope that this was helpful and that with a little bit of practice, you can create your own unique textures and color combinations using this technique. So don't forget to check out the link in the description if you want to know more about my stone and marble brushes. And please feel free to share your artwork that you come up with in our Facebook group or tag me on Instagram and I would absolutely love to see what you make. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.